So I just may come out there. I don't know. Lord may just do something amazing. I promise I won't do laps, though. Oh, goodness. I don't know. I better not promise that. Lord might have me do laps. <laughs> I'm so excited. The Lord woke me up super early this morning, and Catherine sent me a, a, a text this morning. She's so encouraging. And what I love is that she always sends the word and, uh, and has for the last few months just to encourage me, praying for me, and she sends a word. And it was just confirmation of where the Lord had me this morning. And I just want to, I just, I thank, I thank God for her. She is, is so, I know y'all are super blessed to have her here. Uh, but First Chronicles 16, 8 through 12, and I'm just going to uh, read this real quick. Y'all can turn to it if you want to, but it's, it's just, I wanted to share this with you. I wasn't expecting to share this, but it was just confirmation in what the Lord wanted me to give and, and testifying what he has done in my life. And the Word of God says in First Chronicles chapter 16, 8 through 12, it says, Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. And so I, as I was praying this morning, the Lord was like, I want you to tell, I want you to tell, I want you to tell him. I'm like, we want to tell him what? I want you to tell him a story. I want you to tell him what I've done in your life. Because it's, it's, it's one thing, you know, we, we see these scriptures and they're so good, but when, when you can see it's by the word of someone's testimony, it's like, wow. I'm going through that, or I can relate, or I can understand what she's facing, because I'm in that season right now. And when you see that God has done something in another sister's life or another person's life, and, they've used, and God has used his word to heal them, it's amazing to see what every trial, every situation. You know, this, the second part of this, of this verse in Psalm 73, 28 says, I have put my trust in the Lord God. So if we put our, we cannot trust someone we don't know. So we had to establish drawing near to him, right? We come near to the Lord. We want to get to know him. We got to get to, he gives us the access through the veil, Hebrews 10. He gives us access. Now we can know, we can know God. Amazing. You are now that temple, so now we've established that relationship. Jesus has paid, the, he has paid for your sins. He's purchased you. You have been bought with a price. Now you can come boldly to the throne room of grace. Let's not take advantage of that in our time of need that we just sang about. I need him every second of every day of every hour of, of my life. And there are days that I don't, I, I go without him or I don't meet with him that morning and my day is wound up in shambles. <laughs> Anybody else? Where you've sought the Lord and your days where you consecutively seek the Lord. Hebrews chapter, chapter 11 says that, that without faith it's impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who every now and then seek him. <laughs> Diligently. That means every day, every second, pray without ceasing, giving thanks all the time. Sometimes I'll be talking to him on aisle eight at Walmart. Just, I mean, let's just, you've been bought with a price. The very, the very presence of God dwells in you. The same presence that dwelled, that hovered over the Ark of the Covenant, where the mercy seat, where they sprinkled the blood, where someone accidentally would touch it and would, die we saw Catherine standing up here she is the temple of the Holy Ghost the very presence of God dwells in her wow what an amazing God that he would want someone like me to dwell in someone like me well in 2003 I shared with you that that was the August 16th of 2003 was when Jesus met me. He must needs go through Katy, Texas 
at midnight that night and said, if you knew, Angela, if you knew the gift of God and who's talking to you, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. Oh, give me this water. I want it. I don't want it to just be my mom and dad. I want it for myself. I want Jesus for me. And he radically changed my life. Well, in 2003, y'all, I, I shared with y'all how it was a series of events of salvations. My husband, my friend got saved. Her husband got saved. My husband got saved. Kiddos were getting saved. Women in the neighborhood were getting saved. God was doing it. I didn't even have to try. I was just falling in love with Jesus. There was no trying to beat everybody in the head with this humongous Bible that made that other stand fall to the ground. That's why I have to use the anointed one by, that Mark uses. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But it's the, it's the most amazing thing. We, don't ha- we just have to fix our eyes on Jesus. We have to get under the spout, <laughs> under that, the flowing, falling in love with him, drawing near to him. He'll do the rest. You don't, remember the woman at the well? I'm getting ahead of myself. Y'all, when she met Jesus, what'd she do? She dropped her water pot. She laid aside that thing that easily beset her, and she ran and told all the men, Come and see the man that told me all that I ever did. It's not this, the Christ. When you meet Jesus, the person of Jesus Christ, he will change your life. You cannot get enough of him. I've heard my dad say it over and over. People tell him, I've tried your Jesus. He didn't do nothing for me. Huh, huh. I get it now. You ain't tried my Jesus because if you had tried my Jesus, you would not be saying that. (laughs) You wouldn't be saying that. Well, (laughs) soon after 2003, God brought me to Isaiah 61, and I was reading in Isaiah 61, in the very first three chapters, first three verses. For the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. It's the same message that Jesus spoke in Luke chapter 4 after he had spent 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, in the desert, and Satan had tempted him with three temptations. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And all those distractions, Jesus came at him with the what? The word of God. The word with the word. Man, that's awesome. As it is written, as it is written, as it is written, over and over again. Temptation is our opportunity to be obedient to the one who died for you. Take that opportunity. God, he is making a way for me to escape. So we're with the temptation. I'm going to take that opportunity because I love him more than me. I love him more than me. I'm going to live a holy and acceptable life, pleasing unto God, my Lord and my Savior. So the Lord placed this vision on my heart soon after I was saved. And again, I shared with y'all last night that I, I printed out all of these papers, and my husband was like, what if you're doing? We're going we're gonna to have 30 women in our house. We don't know where these women come from. Where they? I didn't care. I was going to tell all that Jesus had ever done for me. I wanted them to know, is not this the Christ? It, was, it, was, it wasn't my nature, my flesh, my, my default. You know, the, the default that once you, you get done with a conference and you got on the spiritual high on Monday, you, you go back to your default. <laughs> the thing that you were born with. <laughs> man, inner man, I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless, that default lived no more. She don't live no more. I've, there's a new man in me, Christ Jesus. So the Lord began doing this, and I've drawing near to God and, and establishing that trust with him. So it was, he gave me a vision for women's ministry and, and, and shared with me back then in 2003 that, you know, you could write a book. And I'm like, yeah, right. I laughed. I said, I ain't even graduated high school. Really? Yeah. Okay, that was on the back burner there. So shortly after that, the Lord began to do some new things. And God, my husband, uh, 
he, he got a new job. We, we moved to Lufkin, Texas, and it was right uh, about two hours southeast of Houston. And um, we were there probably, I would say, maybe two, two or three months. And again, I, we sold a bunch of stuff. And here I am, I'm, I'm learning how to trust the Lord, not just with my eternity, but with my every day. And at the time, I had been struggling with some, some issues. I had uh, been ha- bleeding for three years, had endometriosis real bad, fibro- fibroid cyst, all kinds of excruciating pain. But, you know, I'm like, God, if you can heal me, you can heal me. I know you can. I have no doubt in my mind that you can heal me. And so we moved to Lufkin, and, and I had been to many doctors, and they all just kept telling me the same thing. You know, you've had two children. You're probably not going to be able to have any more children. My uterus was four times the size it was supposed to be, and just in always pain, always pain. And so I began to just, okay, God, I don't know what you're doing, but Michael, my husband, received a promotion. And so we moved to uh, Lufkin, Texas, and he began to work at this, what's called Discount Tire. He was a manager for Discount Tire. And we had great benefits and a whole nine yards, 401K, the insurance, all the stuff. It was so great. In fact, we were so excited about this new job um, that, you know, we didn't even, Michael and I didn't even pray about it. We just, we were just like, it's just God, God's done doing this. And so we were like, let's just go, let's go. And so we moved to Katy, Texas, and, uh, and then after that, we moved to Lufkin. Again, Katy, we, he got promoted, and then we moved to Lufkin. So here we are in Lufkin, Lufkin Texas, and we just started going to this brand-new church, <clears throat> Harmony Hill Baptist Church there in Lufkin. And uh, we didn't know anybody. Again, we were only there about two or three months. And my husband, uh, again, he's working at this job. I'm a stay-at-home mom, have two kids. Uh, Justin and uh, Brianne and Justin, and uh, we're, uh, he walks in one afternoon. And I'm thinking he's coming home for lunch. Again, we're just there two, three months into this thing. Brand new people moved into a new neighborhood. In fact, we gave our bed away because I was getting a new bed because we were going to be making the money, right? And so we got an air mattress for the time being until I found a good bed, you know, the kind with the pillow top, and it's just so nice. And so we're, we're, we get there, and uh, Michael walks in two months again after this, and I'm still having my issues, and, but I'm just excited. We got this new church. He walks in, and he says, huh, I got fired today. I said, yeah, right. You're joking, because he's a jokester. Yeah, he's like the boy who cried wolf. I'm like, you better not be joking with me. Are you for real? Yeah, I got fired. I mean, he was white as a ghost. And I'm like, what are we going to do? I we, I gave our bed away. We don't even have a bed. Like, we barely have, we, we used all the 401k to move, right, and to, and to get this house and everything. What are we going to do? And the Lord just kept that, you know, that still small voice? Come talk to me. Come talk to me. Open my word. And this was probably the first time in my life where I've, I opened up the word of God to get an answer for, for this, for what was happening in my life. And the Lord brought me to Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a what? New thing. Shall ye not know it? Did you forget who I was? I'm God. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Okay. So I shut the Bible and I said, all right, Lord, here's where I get to know you, that you're trustworthy. Here's where I've drawn near to you. I've accepted you as my Lord and Savior. I know you as my my Savior. I know you as I've fallen madly in love with you. And now I'm going to get to know you as my provider. Again, it's not that he just gives us these things. He is the provider. He gives us himself. Sometimes it's not the need that he meets. Sometimes he meets you with him. He gives you himself 
Because he's given us, First Peter says that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's not just God- godliness. <clears throat> it's life. He is acquainted with all of our griefs. And he is enough. We just sang about it. He is enough. He is enough. So as, as I'm sitting here, of course, you know, it didn't happen overnight. He's going, this testing, this, this testing is going to build that faith muscle. But anytime you work out or you do any kind of uh, weights or anything, there's a, there's a cutting so that more muscle can be leaner and strengthened. So you're working out these muscles. Well, we have a faith muscle. And we go through trials and tribulations, to, and we can choose to focus on our flesh and try to do it our way, or we can trust God and and take him at his word. That we've truly been bought with a price. There's a king in in, uh, Isaiah, his name is Hezekiah, or uh, prophet Isaiah, Hezekiah. And there was a king called King Zennacherib. And King Zennacherib sent a letter to Hezekiah. He sent this letter to Hezekiah, mocking Hezekiah's God, telling him that we're coming for you. You can tell your God this and that. But we're coming for you, Hezekiah. You know what Hezekiah's first response was? It it wasn't to go get a committee or to go to to the taxes or see whenever your money can come in and all this. It wasn't to go to the bank and try to work some numbers. He took that letter and he busted up into the throne room of God and he laid the letter before the Lord and he said, God, King Zennacherib is talking about you. I need you to come down and handle your business. It didn't say that, but something like that. That's how I I interpreted it. But the point is, the point is that his first response was to go to God. Was to go to God. And you have the Holy Ghost. If you are a child of God and you call on Jesus to save you, you have been bought with a price. This ain't your problem. It's God's problem. So God, handle your business. Handle your business. I trust you. Lay that letter before the Lord and say, you've got it. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall you not know it? I'm here to build your faith muscle in me, to strengthen you in me, in the Lord. So here we are. I'm like, okay, God, you gave me a word. I'm ready for this thing. I'm ready for you to show up and show off and do the thing. Of course, at the time that Michael had gotten fired, I was scheduled for a hysterectomy. And so that got canceled, right? Because I have our insurance is with his job. So we had to wait for that thing. And all of that to say, over and over and over, God kept providing. I remember one morning, uh, I kept the kids home. It was a, we had that Sunday morning service, and, and I, there were, I had $10 left. And I remember the Lord telling me, give me that $10. I can do immeasurably more with that $10. But I had spent that $10 because I knew that I could get a loaf of bread. And, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You, you, can, you got it all written out in your head, and you have it written out. And you're like, God, I can, I can get this and this and this to make lunches for the kids for school tomorrow. And the Lord's like, "Mm mm-mm, give it to me. (laughs) So I gave it, put it in the plate. My husband goes, what are you doing? I'm like, God told me to give it, so we're giving it. He's building our faith muscle, Michael. Trust him. Oh, my goodness. So here we go. $10 goes goes away. We get to the Sunday morning, Monday morning, uh, we get up, get the kids up. I ended up keeping them home from school that day um, because I could cook them a meal, but I couldn't make them a lunch. They weren't on the plan yet. So I kept them home from school, and they were playing a little board game in the living room, and I was in the kitchen table, and I was reading, and the Lord tells me to write a grocery list. So I write this grocery list. So I'm writing this list, and and, and I I asked the kids to come in, and we prayed over the list. And immediately after we said, in Jesus' name, amen, the phone rang. And it was a gentleman by the name of Don Rogers that was from our church in Katy, Texas. I hadn't heard from him in a long time. And he says, what are you doing? And, you know, you put your church voice on. You know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Oh, hello. Well, praise the Lord. I'm doing great. Oh, it's 
swell here in, in Lufkin. We're just enjoying the new church and everything. He said, no, you are not doing good, Angela. Well, yes, I am. You know, you argue. He said, because I'm sitting here at a Western Union, and I, the Lord's telling me to wire you $500. What's your, what's your DL? I need your license number. I was like, what? Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Oh, you just don't understand. And then you get the crying voice, and he can't understand a word you're saying. But thankfully, he can interpret tongues, so I'm just kidding. <clears throat> So he's, he's telling me, okay, yeah, that's great, awesome, praise the Lord. Well, you do what God's telling you to do. And I'm like, well, you just don't know. And I began to share with him about what all has happened so far. But I knew that the Lord was doing a new thing. He was building my faith muscle so that I could trust him, so that I, know, I knew that he was trustworthy. But how can I know he's trustworthy if I'm never put in a position for to trust him? If I'm never put in a circumstance to trust him, how do I know he's trustworthy? I've seen him work in your life and in your life and in your life and my mom and dad's life, but I want it for me. How can I know if he's a healer if I'm never going to be put in a position for him to heal me? Y'all, he wants to show himself strong on the behalf of those who will trust him and who seek him, and who want to know him. You're his. If you've called on Jesus to save you, remind him, I'm going to be reminding you all throughout this weekend that you have been bought with a price. This ain't your problem. It's God's. Aren't you glad? He's got way bigger shoulders than you anyway. He can handle it. He's got it. So soon after that, the Lord, I, said, I called Michael. I'm like, well, you're not going to believe this $500. Well, go grocery shopping. So I went. We had leftover, and so that same year, the Lord began to do miracle after miracle after miracle, and again, I was still struggling. Well, that morning, one morning, and it was probably about four or five months in that year, we, uh, of course, our, our church there had like a mission church after big church. You know, you have big church, and then you go home, get dressed in your jeans and t-shirt, and then you go downtown and you'd have Mission Church where you feed the homeless and you have a little Bible study in a garage somewhere at a shop, at a window car repair shop. And so that's what we did. I wanted to get involved in that. And so I brought the kids up there. And, and, but that morning, the Lord had brought me to a, uh, a verse of Scripture in the, in the Gospels about the woman with the issue of blood. And I remember reading that and thinking, wow, that is so awesome. Of course, her issue was a whole lot longer than mine. Mine was only three years. And I'm going to say, God, you could, she just touched the hem of your garment. And she was healed. Wow, that's amazing. These stories that I've read my whole life, y'all know what I'm talking about. You read them, and then the Holy Spirit just illuminates, and they're standing off the page and slapping you around a little bit. <laughs> that's kind of what happened that day. So here I am, and I'm reading this passage of Scripture, and I'm like, Lord, that was at Sunday morning, and I go to church, and we, get, we come back, we get ready for, for uh, Mission Church. And on the way to Mission Church, I heard a song, and that year, the song, Nicole C. Mullen, y'all know who Nicole C. Mullen is, it was a song called One Touch, and it was her debut, it just came out on the radio on KSBJ 89.3. And I, yeah, I still remember that. That's crazy. I still remember that. Wow. Um, and so I'm sitting here listening to the, the lyrics. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'd be made whole. Wow. I just read that this morning. So here I am. I'm like, Lord, that's two times today. You've shared, you, it's, are you? Okay, because that's volume control with God, right? If he keeps telling you something, that's volume control. So here I am, and I'm listening, and I'm like, we get to Mission Church. And, and, and y'all, I was in so much pain that day, but I was like, I'm going to go. So I get there, and we're, we're sitting there, and it was, it was so, there was lawn chairs, and it was greasy, and it was just not, you know, like it is here with all of you beautiful women in these nice, wonderful chairs. It was just gringy, and in a, it was a garage, okay? So I don't know how else to explain it. 
But here we are, we're in this garage, and everybody, we're feeding, you know, hot dogs, hamburgers, and the mission pastor gets up, gets, I say gets up there, he's just there. <laughs> he, <laughs> and so he's, he's talking, and, and the praise team played a little bit of guitar and sang a couple songs, and I'm in the very back, because I'm there to minister to someone. I'm like, I'm there to be a blessing. And uh, the, I'm, I'm probably from, from here to where that, that uh, little thing is. And so here we are. Uh, and he's, he's talking, and, and, and I'm in the back, and uh, he says, he starts reading out of one of the Gospels. Same story, different Gospel. About the woman with the issue of blood. <laughs> I'm like, that's when your heart starts beating real fast. Because then he says, there's somebody in here. You know who you are. I'm like, oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> he says, Jesus is passing by right now. He wants to heal you. Press through the crowd. We want to pray for you. And I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> These people don't know me. <laughs> they don't know me. They don't know what's going on. Like, I'm not trying to be, oh, hey, I'm bleeding. <laughs> I mean, that's something you say, right? This is a women's conference. <laughs> I can say that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So here we are. And I, I'm, I'm like, okay. And then I get this tap on my shoulder. I'm like, oh. If I, if I had turned around and no one was there, I'd, have I'd fall out right there. <laughs> because I knew the Holy Spirit was already tugging on me. I mean, it was like my heart was on a rope, and it was like. Pfft. So it was one of the deacons of the church. And he said, he said what's your name? And I was like, Angela. <laughs> you don't really know me very well yet. Um, he goes, I don't know why, but the Holy Spirit wants me to tell you, don't wait. And I was like, oh. And I just lost it. So I walked three steps and said, it's me. And so he's, they, they were like, oh, really? And I, they were like, well, what's going on? I'm like, well, I've, I've been struggling. I've got a, a lot of female issues going on. And I can relate a tiny bit with that woman that you just read about. And I am, I just want Jesus to heal me. And we, my husband and I have been trying for seven years to have another child and we've not been able to have another baby. And I've been told by three different doctors that I could never get pregnant again. And they, there wasn't nothing miraculous that happened. They anointed me with oil. I say there wasn't nothing miraculous that happened. But there was. So I, I get home. They prayed for me. There's three people. The guy who tapped me, the mission pastor, and a sweet little lady named Barbara. There's a lot of Barbaras in here. Raise your hand if you're a Barbara. Hallelujah for the Barbaras. So here she, she was so precious. And, and she's just weeping over me. And they were weeping for me. And I didn't even really, they don't know who I was. But God, was, God had met me that day in that garage, a window repair shop. And y'all, it don't matter where you are. He wants to meet you where you're at. So here I am. I go home. I tell Michael, I've been healed. I've been healed. Of course, he's like, let's have a baby. <laughs> well, I'll never forget where I was three months later. I was in New York, Rochester, New York, with my sister Chrissy. And I was feeling kind of sick. And she said, let's go get a pregnancy test. And we went and got one, and it said pregnant. So that's our 15-year-old, our miracle. His name is Levi Morgan, Levi Anthony. I named him Levi. Uh, Lord brought me into Chronicles about that story we talked about last night. That's where he brought me. When I asked him where he wanted me, what he wanted to name him, God said Levi. Of course, it's about the Levites, right? They were the singers, and P.S., he loves to sing. So <laughs> he's a singer like his mama. Yeah, well, he didn't have a choice. Bless him. All right. <laughs> so we moved again through all of this. It was just a series of events and in, in that God was just showing up and showing off. And I could go on and on and on and talk about how God just moved in a mighty way in Lufkin, Texas. Just, by the way, remember the mattress I told you about? One day I was driving to, uh, to drop my kids off at school. And there was a white truck pulling down our road. And it had a, I was leaving, I, we were in my little, you know, the mom minivan. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
And I was like, oh, someone's getting a bed today. It had a big old queen-size bed, pillow top. You know what I'm talking about, the kind that I had dreamed about that we were going to buy, but we couldn't. We were still sleeping on that air mattress, and by this time, that thing was like a V. Because if you know my husband, he's six foot three, and it was just crazy. We were, we was, and I don't like to touch, so <laughs> we was just falling in the middle. When I'm sleeping, I don't like to touch. So <clears throat> here we are. I'm walk, driving the kids to school, and I see this, this truck, and it has a box spring and a mattress. It's in the plastic. It's brand new, and I'm thinking, huh. It sure would be nice to get a bed, but that's awesome. Someone's getting a bed. You know, I go about my day. So I get home, and I drive up to my, and we didn't have a garage garage, but it was a little carport. Well, I drove up into this car, my, my garage carport, and there that bed was, the same bed I just saw in that truck. It was up against, in my garage, in the carport, leaning up against the wall. And I'm like, that was my bed? Who gave me that bed? I called my sister. I called my mom. I'm like, who? Did y'all buy me a bed? Who bought me a bed? Nobody. We didn't buy you a bed. I don't know who bought you the bed. So we still have the bed, and that's the bed from heaven. So <laughs> if you come and see me in, in Decatur, Alabama, you'll get to sleep on the bed from heaven. So anyway, so and then, again, series and series after event, and that faith muscle just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. We had Levi. God moved us to, at the time, we were going through a, we were going through a uh, fasting with, with, how much time do I have? Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, I, I'm like my daddy. I like to tell stories. He, I think he's here. <laughs> he's sick. Sorry, Dad. Okay, so <laughs> I just saw his red shirt. He, he left with a red shirt. I think that's him. So here we are. I get, we're in, I'm, I'm pushing way forward, fast forward, right? We're in Decatur, Alabama. But before we moved there, we were going in 2012, January of 2012. You know, I shared with y'all last night about the prayer team that prayed in um, in in Lufkin, where we had that all-night prayer meetings. So God was showing me, was teaching me some things. And, and God just moved. You know, the, the nights that you'd spend all night for the devil and then you just decide, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hey, don't live this life without at least doing it once. Just do it one time. I don't, I, I, I don't wanna live in the less than. I wanna live in the everything that God has for me. Man, he wants to do some things. But we got to let him. So as, I, as I, I'm seeking the face of God, and it's not this grocery list of prayer requests anymore, I just want to know him. I want to know him as the provider. I want to know him as healer. I want to know him as my best friend. I want to know him as my husband. I want to know him as my God, my father. I want to know him as everything that he says he is from this, this sovereign book right here. I want to know him as that. So he's, if you want to know him as that, he's going to put you in positions to know him that way, to trust him in that way. So we were going through a fast at our church there in Lufkin and in January of 2012. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so in January of 2012, it was a 21-day fast. My husband and I were fasting and praying uh, just to start the year out. And we didn't realize what God was really going to do. And so as we're seeking the face of God and we're still praying with the, the five other, four other couples, the Lord began to, he did his thing and I did my thing. By the end of the 21 days, we came back and God was saying the same thing. It was incredible. And my dad calls Michael and says, hey, what do you think about moving to Decatur? And y'all can buy our house and, and you know, we've got a, uh, Decatur Baptist is a great uh, Bible you know, discipleship program here, and they're, they're big on all of that, and Michael was, was wanting to, to learn more about that. So I looked at him, and I said, okay. He was the one to make the decision, and I said, Wherever you, whatever you want to do, I'll follow you. And so he said, okay, well, we're going to Decatur. I was like, okay. <laughs> because at the time, we, every single Friday, we were having anywhere from 20 to 23 people in our house. 
and we were, we were teaching them, pouring into these, these couples. And they were so hungry for Jesus. And, and I was like, we're going to leave all of them? How are we going to do this? Like, I was involved in the prayer team. Like, y'all were, Lufkin was a, remor- a memorial thing in my life. God had done amazing things in my life in that town. And I just shared with you just a, the big ones. But I didn't want to leave and lasting, lasting friendships, lasting still to this day. I got text messages this morning. We're praying for you. God, that's what happens when God unifies a body. These relationships, by the way, last forever because of Jesus Christ. That, inter- that e- eternal investment that you have with the Lord and you you. You get with the body, you, you, you're, you don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together and you pray for one another and you read the word together and you, you speak the word, not your words, but the word into the lives of your brothers and sisters in this body, in this church, in this local body. Wow, I'm not going to, to cut my hand off and put it over here and then I'll say I'll see you in a couple years. And expect the hand to still be alive. If I cut my finger off and even put it in a, in a, no, the rest of the body is going to try to put the finger back on. I don't, that wasn't even in my notes. I don't even know why I'm saying all this. (laughs) All right, get back to it. Lord, we're going to be here all day. Mm, No, we're not. Praise the Lord. We gotta listen to the voice of God. But the enemy will come in, ladies. He will come in and try to steal, kill, and destroy the voice of truth. But the more that you are abiding in him, like John, how he leaned up against the chest of Jesus, that's how I wanna see myself. Just I wanna hear, I wanna hang on every word that he has for me. Because I know that that word won't return void. I know that when I seek him, I will find him. I know that when he gives me the word that I need for the day, it's exactly what I need for the day. He's amazing that way. We've been bought with a price. He's not a one and done. Where he's, I'll see you when you get here, good luck. No, he is here all the time, every day. Never leaving, never forsaking so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The only explanation I am standing right here on this stage is Jesus Christ. That is the only reason. He is, it's, it's through his reason and the prayers of the saints. It's y'all's fault. <laughs> y'all prayed for me. Thank you. Thank you. Because I have Jesus now, and there's no one like him. No other relationship on this world, in this world can compare to the relationship that you can have with Christ. No husband, no children, no job, nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. So then, where was I? Y'all, I get on these rabbit trails, but again, they're holy, they're holy rabbits, they're righteous rabbits, they're saved, they're going to heaven. Okay, and the voice, okay, so here we are, we move into Decatur. My, my dad called Michael and he told him, we're going to Decatur, and Michael said, we're going. So I was like, fine, I'll do what you want me to do. So we get here, and it's, I, I go early, I get here early, so it's August of 2012, and uh, I'm like, okay, God, you know, I'm here for Michael. Like, I don't know what you have for me. I'm not going to join the choir. I'm not going to join anything. I'm just going to wait on you. I'm not going to do any music. I'm just going to wait. Because that's what I felt like the Lord was telling me to do. In his word, he was telling me, he was leading me. Thy word is a lamp to my feet, light into my path. I wanted to hear from him. I wanted to do exactly what he wanted me to do. So I knew, remember, I, he gave me a vision a long time ago, 2003 about women's ministry. So at the same time, during all of the time in Lufkin, God had also given me a vision for prayer. I was hungry for prayer. I was hungry to meet with my brothers and sisters. Again, 
Our Father who art in heaven. Jesus said when y'all pray, he's from the south. When y'all pray, this is how you ought to pray. This is how. It's corporate. It's corporate. Yes, we need to meet with him individually. But this body, when you come together and you pray together and you pray the word of God like we talked about last night, and you call upon him in truth, what is truth? The word of God, sanctify them in thy truth, John 17, 17. Thy word is truth. When you come together corporately and you pray together, whoo, number one, the enemy hates it. Let me tell you something. He hates that. Because why? God loves it. Anything God loves, he hates. God says in Psalms that how good it is that the brethren dwell together in unity. Acts 4.31 says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, and they all had things common. They all came together. They had a unity. They had a bond they had a one purpose, a one focus. They were lasered in on bringing Jesus glory to spread the gospel and bringing fame to his name. That's what, that's what, that was the common thing. They wanted to do what Jesus, so that's what happens. And why do we think that that has changed? It has not changed. It has not changed. The word of God still saves. It's still relevant today. Is still doing and accomplishing everything that he said he would do. Yes, this is an ancient book, but it is alive, it is breathing, it is active for your good. He has preserved it from generation to generation. There are no mistakes in this. Why? Because Jesus is the Word. And this Bible is perfect. There are no mistakes. So when you, my sister, open up this book, you better believe that you are encountering through the Holy Spirit the words of God. Jesus, Jesus, the word became flesh, John 1, 14. So here we are, Decatur, Alabama. So I'm praying, I'm asking God, what am I going to do? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to minister? A few ladies from the church had met with me and said, what's on your heart? What's the theme? What's God showing you these days? We met at a little restaurant, and I shared with them my heart. And at the time, they were like, well, we were actually praying that God would, would raise up a, a prayer, a women's prayer person in our, in our women's ministry. And I said, well, I'll do it. I mean, it ain't going to be nothing fancy. We're just going to pray. You know, we, we're just going to talk about fish. If you weren't here last night, that's a little side joke. We're just talking about Jesus. We're just going to talk about Jesus. We're going to read the scripture. We're going to pray the scripture. It's going to be, to, it's going to be spirit-led, <laughs> scripture-fed, worship-based praying. Man, that should fire us up. That it, that, I don't have to try to figure it out. He's already done it for me. I just got to do it. That's amazing to me. He just wants us to surrender to surrender to his will. This is his will. Again, last night, I can't have a mind of Christ if I don't know what's on his mind. I gotta read it. This is not the way to do that. Okay. But you know what I mean. Jesus wants you to know him. He wants you to know him. This is how we know him. So, again, I'm praying. The Lord gives me another vision for Decatur Baptist Church. So then, I, okay, God, you're in this. He brought me to Judges chapter 6. I began reading in Judges chapter 6 in 2012. In 2012, I began reading, and it says, The angel of the Lord appeared unto Gideon, verse 11. Thou mighty man of valor, the Lord is with thee. Thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> you talking to me. I'm not Gideon. He was threshing wheat. He was hiding from the enemy. We had already had a few Bible uh, studies and prayer times at my house with some of the ladies. And again, there was no prayer request list. We waited. We waited on the Holy Spirit with an open Bible. And God began to share with us. He began to say to us, pray that I will shake the church that I will shake Decatur Baptist, that I will shake the church. 
He brought us to Joel chapter 3. He brought us to Hebrews chapter 12. He brought us to Acts 4. Whew. He brought us to Nehemiah 5.13. All about shaking. And so Nehemiah was, or Judge, uh, Gideon was shaking this wheat. But normally when they would thresh wheat, it would be up on a mountaintop. So the wind and the breeze would blow away the tares. The stuff that, you know, gets in your teeth. You don't want that in the bread and all that. So here, they, here he is. He's doing it. He's hiding. He's, not, he's hiding. He's not up where everyone can see him. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. And his response to the angel of the Lord was, I am poor in Manasseh. I'm the least in my father's house. And my, b- before I had even read Judges 6, the Lord had given me this vision for prayer ministry in our church, for, for the women's ministry, and even reminded me of the book that I was going to write. Ah, yeah, right. So here I am thinking, okay, what in the world? Look, heavenly choir is singing. Y'all, this is awesome. <laughs> I love this woman right here. This Renee, she is amazing. She has memorized so many scriptures about you have encouraged me this weekend. If y'all, this woman is, yes. Woo, I can't, I'm gonna share her story when I get back to, and that that make put I got I gotta get on the ball, memorizing scripture. But here I am. And I'm like, no one knows me here, God. <laughs> They're going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> They're going to think I'm crazy. No. Nope. No. Nope. They know my dad, Bobby Bonner, but they don't know me. They know my mom. They don't know me. I'm poor in Manessa. I'm the least. I'm the prodigal. Oh, that's just Angela. <laughs> Y'all. So here I am, the Lord began to give me all of this, this, these new things in his word, and I was learning him. And I get a phone call from Mary Matovich in 2013. She has gone to be with our Jesus out of uh, Las Vegas and at Paradise Baptist Church, Mike Matovich's wife. And she says, why don't you come and do our ladies' retreat that we're having? And I was like, really? Okay. So I began to pray and and seek God's face, and the Lord had given me a little acronym called WANTED in 2013. 2013, I began to write WANTED, and it was such a skeleton. All I had was just scripture, which was enough, right? (laughs) I mean, he's enough. So, W, he wants to water me. Oh, yes, because John 4, God, you came to me. You're the living water. That's perfect. Okay, water. He wants to, he is the living water. A, he wants to adorn us with robes of righteousness. Praise the Lord. He has given me the robe of righteousness. He wants to nurture me. And he is the bread of life. He nurtures me every morning. He gives me the bread of the manna that comes down every morning, ready, hot and ready, fresh. Woo, every morning. T. I also had to figure out where I was. Okay, T. See, I didn't graduate. So I had to remind myself. So T, he wants to teach us. He is our teacher. He gives us those pop quizzes, you know, the ones you don't know. I ain't ready for this. But the Holy Spirit guides us, teaches us. Sometimes a teacher chastises us. So there's testing that comes in, in the lesson of T. E is empower all that has to do. God has given us this treasure in these earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. So here you have all of this that he is. And then it's not that, that that's, that's enough in everything, but then he wants to deliver us. Because we go back to the default. When we get saved and then something bad happens and then we're like, we don't feel him anymore. Because, you know, God's mad at me. Honey, our feelings are never based upon his truth. They can, uh, my feelings cannot dictate truth. Truth is truth. Just because I'm having an emotional, and Lord, we're emotional creatures. Thank goodness he, it is not based on my emotions. He just is. He is the I am. I am that I am. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God, that it is not based on my feelings. So he wants to deliver us. So I said, okay, here's what I've got. What, and the Lord gave me this. Again, he said, you're going to write this thing. 
And he brought me to Habakkuk and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables. And I'm like, Lord, so I put that in my back pocket. And I went to Las Vegas. And I met these two precious girls right here, Courtney and Shea. And I'm telling y'all, they the OGs right here. Bless their hearts. They got to hear the first, very first wanted Bible study, whatever. <laughs> but it's amazing to me, and I get choked up because I see their faces. That was 10 years ago. When God says something to you, and he backs it up with his word, you better believe he's going to perform it. You're going to, he will. He will. He will. Now there, through those 10 years, I, you know, there were moments where I didn't hear him. And in 2015 and 2016 and 17, I threw down my Bible and I said, God, you forgot about me. You forgot about me. What'd you do? Just give me this vision? Did you just bring me to Decatur to, to make fun of me? To tell me that, to tease me with this? I said that. <laughs> I said that to God. Then the Lord just began to move and work. God began to, to show up mightily in, in our church through prayer. The women were so on fire for the Lord. They were wanting to just meet with Jesus. They didn't care. 2019, the end of 2019, a friend of mine, Sean Hager, here that's with me, she asked me, said, what do you think about doing a, what was it, that 20, 2020, I'm sorry, she's better at dates than me. What do you think about doing a, a Bible study? Well, we, I prayed about it for a little while. But y'all know 2020, right? COVID year. The Lord began to do all kinds of stuff in my life in that year because we were having church online. Again, I, I, by this time, I've joined the choir. I finally, you know, surrendered and said, fine, I will do it. And so it's been almost, you know, we've been almost here in Decatur, Alabama for 10 years by this time. So 20, 2020, I began, we, I had six ladies in, my, in my, my living room, and we were, I was teaching wanted. We began to teach wanted. And then that's when the Lord kept bringing it up, kept bringing it up. I need more content in that thing. He kept giving me more content, more content. And a little bitty binder that was probably about 12 pages long has now become 310 pages and is now a full-blown eight-week Bible study. And it was published this year in, in January of 2023. So the Lord will do what he said he will do. But prior to that, year, 2020, last year, let me just say last year, I knew that the Lord was wanting me, I'm like, God, I know that you want me to, you, you wanted me to write the book, the book is almost finished, by the way, God provided every penny, that book was about $5,000, we don't have that kind of money, God provided every bit of it, God tells you he's gonna, he's gonna do something in your life, I promise you he's gonna meet every need, you don't have to worry about it, you just have to surrender, you just have to surrender and believe that he will. So through that, of course, I asked for forgiveness because I, I pitched a pretty good doozy fit, you know, back in 2015 and 16. And the Lord was bringing me through and stretching that faith muscle to build it stronger and stronger and stronger. And here I am. I get to this, this last year, and I know that the Lord has given me this, God, is, is it going to happen this year? Because, I mean, I'm excited the Lord, our prayer ministry has been established. We, we, we have house of prayer now on Wednesday nights for one hour. People are seeking the face of God using the word of God and letting the pastors are leading it. Wow, it starts with our men. We need more, pray for your men in this church. Pray for your leaders in this church. They need it because Satan is attacking the leaders. He's attacking the men. And here, here we're having all of these, these the, our pastors are leading this, and we have, we have Wednesdays, we have four Wednesdays out of the month, quarterly we have a fifth Wednesday, we have communion that, that Wednesday. We have the first Wednesday we pray for missions, the second Wednesday we pray for, for uh, the lost and the prodigals, the third Wednesday we pray for, for members, and the fourth we pray for ministries. And so God, we, we start out with the four R's, the reverence, we reverence him, our Father, 
then we, then we, then we respond to who he is. Because when you, when you encounter a holy God, it's going to bring you to your face. You're going to begin to confess, and, and confession leads to righteousness. And then, then request. Then request. Because you've drawn near to God, he's drawn near to you, and now all of a sudden, you have his heart and what he wants to do. So you're praying his will be done. His will be done. Then Readiness. We're ready to go out and do. Put on that whole armor of God to fight, to fight the enemy and our flesh. So that's every Wednesday. And the prayer, prayer ministry and the prayer team, that's been established now. And I'm like, Lord, this, this year we went to a prayer conference in Katy, Texas. Last March, March 1st and 2nd and 3rd, Daniel Henderson preached. It was amazing. Our prayer team was there. Our, our worship pastor was there. It was amazing. We even got to go by the old house with the Decatur Baptist Church bus. And I saw where, I, where Jesus must needs go through Katy, Texas to save this soul right here. I was like, that's the house. And this poor little Hispanic family came out. I was like, what are y'all doing? This big old black church van. <laughs> but I was like, that's where I got saved. That's where I got saved. So here we are, shortly after that, all of a sudden I lost my voice. Didn't have a voice couldn't sing, would, would still be on the praise team, but it's, I'm mute. Nothing's coming out. And I tell Brother X, I'm like, nothing's happening. And then shortly after that, I began to have, was, was singing with a friend, and we were looking at, you know, because we can't memorize any lyrics anymore, so we have to cheat, cheat on the back wall there. Y'all know what I'm talking about, praise team. <laughs> You're like, oh, where are the words? Y'all help us. <laughs> And so you're, you're reading the word. My eyes went completely gone. Could not see. Could not see what I was reading. Then that same week, I began to have a lot of pain in my eyes. Didn't have a voice, lost my voice, lost my eyesight. I had over 30 cornea ulcers last year in my eyes. Went to doctor after doctor after doctor. I had found out I had 40 nodules, or I'm sorry, four, not 40. Oof, that'd be bad. I would not be talking. Four nodules on my vocal cords and my vocal nerve. One's big enough to uh, remove, but they won't remove it because it's wrapped around the vocal nerve. Extreme dizziness, short-term memory loss. I was telling my husband something and went in the kitchen and came back and told him the same thing, and he looks at me and he goes, are you Okay. That scared me. Skin, my skin felt like it was burning, that I was being burned alive. This happened for months. I felt like I was being um, cut in random spots. My nervous system was on fire. My feet felt like I was walking on hot glass all the time, all the time. And every joint felt bruised, every single joint felt bruised. The fatigue was so bad that I fell asleep at a stoplight and had cars honking at me. Like literally, it would happen that quick. Anytime I got still, I would just fall asleep. My skin around my eyes became so swollen that they were, and I, I, my mom and dad, if I had a picture, I'd show you. I, I should have sent something. But, you know, I didn't want to scare y'all though because it's pretty bad. But they were so swollen, it looked like, I, looked like Rocky, you know. Michael would just say Adrian one time, please. Just say Adrian, just for me one time. I'm like, shut up. But my skin around my eyes would be so swollen to touch. And of course, my corneas, my ulcers inside were just burning. Several doctors all year long, again, opinion after opinion after opinion. Finally, I found a doctor that, that said, we're going to run some tests on you, some way. So I think she got like, a whole pint of blood of me. And they sent it off to everything with diseases, all kinds of diseases, found out that I have rheumatoid arthritis. Who would have known? And I didn't know all of that went, entailed that, but it does. And I'm part of the 30% that it attacks all the other stuff, not just your joints. <laughs> so by September last year, I was in so much pain before I was diagnosed. And 
I was, I was still working for a hormone clinic. And uh, my boss walks in, because God had told me that morning, I want you to lay down your job. Because we had just gone through, um, we had just gone through GIC, our big mission conference there in Decatur. And uh, if y'all know anything about that, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for our church. And so I'm like, okay, God, I'll lay it down. I'll lay down my job. But I didn't trust me. Like, I didn't trust me enough to, because I, I didn't want to work anymore. I was in so much pain. And I, but I was, I was in so much pain. And it's, it's easy to fall back to your default when you're hurting. It's easy to forget that God is trustworthy when you're hurting. It's easy to forget to seek his face when you can't see <laughs> and you can't read and you can't sing and everything just goes away and you're just in this cell of your body. And, but because I'm Bobby Bonner's daughter, I'm very stubborn. <laughs> and I was like, uh-uh, I'm gonna do this thing. I'm gonna keep getting up, I'm gonna keep going to church, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna rub some dirt on it and get back in the game, right? Oh, I've heard that many times. But I tell you what, <laughs> God did amazing things. God brought me to Psalm 105. He's talking about Joseph. And if you know anything about anybody in the Bible and all of the stuff that they've gone through, Job, Joseph, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the hero of their story was never them. It was God. So I said, Lord... I want you to be the hero of, of my story. You were the hero of, of my story back in 2000, you know, when Levi was born and the miracle of all of that and even a bed. I know you healed my, my ailment back then. I know you can heal me now. And if you don't heal me, your grace is sufficient for me. Much more would I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ would rest upon me. For when I'm weak, I'm strong. Because he dwells in me. This ain't my problem. It's his. And in Psalm 105, it talks about Joseph there at the end of that chapter. And it says, until the time that Joseph's word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Tried him, tested him. Do you love me? Do you still love me? Are you still going to pursue me when you don't feel good? <laughs> Am I worth it? Am I worth it when your feet feel like they're in fetters? When they're chained? When your body feels like it's just attacking you? Wow. Yes, Lord. I will still praise you. I will still praise you even though I don't feel good. Even though I don't feel good, I will still praise you. Several doctors, again, by September... I walk into the, my office, and I'm the, I'm pretty much, I'm, I do everything <laughs> other than treat. I was the uh, patient coordinate, care coordinator. I was also the social media marketer. I went all over to, I did a, I was, I, I did a lot. And uh, my doc, who I call him doc, he said to me, Angela, I couldn't see, couldn't hardly type. My hands were just, I couldn't hardly move them. And he looks at me that morning, and he says, he's got tears in his eyes. He's a Christian. And he says, Angela, I can't continue to watch you suffer like this. He said, go home and pray. I've got to give you a leave of absence. I can't continue to watch you. That morning, I had prayed and asked God, if you want me to leave this job, you're going to tell Doc to tell me to leave. The very same day, Doc told me, you need to leave. He paid from, he still paid me and took care of my insurance until January the 1st of this year. And y'all, <laughs> God has opened up a door to this women's ministry that has been birthed from almost 20 years ago. 
And now we meet, we have several ladies, and since last November until now, we have had over how many women? 127 women go through the Wanted Bible Study. Women that have been freed from sexual addictions, freed from drugs and alcohol, freed from witchcraft. We had a woman last, a couple weeks ago, that came to our women's Bible study, wanted Bible study, that uh, called on Jesus to save her. She was there to cast some spells, and God saved her. (laughs) Jesus just frustrated all that mess. Wow. This coming Friday, next Friday the 31st, we're going to have all of those women have all been invited, and we have testimony after testimony. We've seen cancer healed. We've seen, again, Freedom happen, complete freedom. Women that have, that have seen the face of Jesus through his word, that have been freed, that are not bound or, or identified by her, her old self. And we live in a world right now in a crisis of identity. Hey, guess what? You're not even identified by you anymore. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. My identity is in Christ. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. So let's be some dead woman, women walking. Some dead women walking. Amen? Amen? So here we are. It's 2023. Can you believe it? God's got more for you. He hadn't come back yet. We're going to talk about that in the next session. Woo! So you've got, we're going to go through John 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're going to, that'll be the introduction. And then we're going to talk about the word, the well, the woman, and then the wedding. Woo! So y'all be sure and come back. So we're going to have a break, Miss Catherine. Amen.